this is going to be the start of a new project. And I know you think you've seen something like this before, but you haven't. This is a different case to what I've used before, insofar as it's completely undrilled, no heat sinks. And the reason is, this is going to be a preamp. If you've seen my previous video of the magic eyes, I'm going to use those sitting on the top here as purely a visual indication of the output. Let's talk a little bit about the ingredients and what the requirements are. Over the last year or two, I have shown a number of amplifiers, one of which was Valve, and there's been various, there's been a Class D, and there's been a couple of Class ABs. Now, all of these can drive a fairly high output, i.e. from your computer or laptop, directly, and there's enough gain there that you don't need a preamp. And obviously, the, the least you can put in, this, in the signal path, the better. But for certain things, you need a little bit extra gain. And once again, I've shown various single chip preamps in the past, which are more than adequate because I don't have a requirement for tone controls because I want it to be as hi-fi as possible. And adding tone controls does all sorts of things, uh, adds colour to the sound, phase shift and noise and inherently distortion as well. So if you can avoid those things, so much the better. Now, the requirement for this preamp is going to be four inputs and stereo, of course, we're talking about. And it's going to have two hi-fi inputs and two less than hi-fi inputs, simply because it's easy to do and it's part of modern life, even if we accept the fact that the quality is not hi-fi. And... Two of the items, well, that I shall be fitting, which I've shown you before. This is the DAC, which I showed you on my last video, which I must say I'm incredibly happy with. The sound quality from it is just superb. A Bluetooth adapter, so you can connect your telephone to it. Now, this is not hi-fi. Again, I've shown this before. But it's as good as they as they are. You just have to accept the fact that they're not the best quality, um, but they sound okay. And for for, for background music or non-important things, it's fine. So the preamp will have the DAC and the Bluetooth module and two line level inputs. Now, I had hoped to do quite a bit of this while we're all locked down, but obviously it also means that stuff from China is not exactly looming fast on delivery. But this item is one that came within just over two and a half weeks. So under the present circumstances, quite pleased. Now, what this is, is the input module, so to speak. This piece mounts on the front panel and contains nothing but a four pole switch. Now, it should contain four LEDs along here, which the manufacturer or the distributor clearly shows. But unfortunately, the board doesn't include those. Now, more on that later. Um, the idea is that as you switch the switch, the corresponding LED <laughs> when it's there, should light, and one of these relays lock in. Let's look at the input side of the board, first of all. Now, it requires between 12 and 15 volts AC here, with a nominal 12 volts, which means you need a transformer with 12 volts at probably about half an amp. I should measure the currents presently. 
but it, it's not going to draw a lot because only one relay will ever be energized at any one time. On the board is full wave rectify in the, in the form of four discrete diodes smoothing and also there is voltage regulator here so now we are going to do have to do a bit of doctoring on this board because as you can see quite clearly the four inputs are here and we only actually need two inputs because I propose to remove this one from the board completely and connect the DAC directly to the board internally and also the Bluetooth will go directly to the board. So there's clearly no point in bearing in mind these have all got to be drilled on the back panel. So it's fairly easy, I think, to remove one of these pairs. Now, I think it will probably be the outside pair I shall remove simply because it's probably going to be easier to unsolder it. Um, so all that needs to go on the back panel are holes for the various phonos and a hole in the centre for mounting. This is the DAC board, which I've shown previously. So there will have to be holes on the back to mount either or well it have to be for mounting both the phono for the coaxial input and the optical input but there are mounting holes here sadly they're not um, in line but um, because pressing any force on these will probably rip them off the board we are going to have to mount them by both holes i propose to use a linear power supply for this mainly because it is a preamp and we are dealing with relatively low levels of sound so we didn't I didn't really want switching artifacts or anything like that involved so it will have a conventional transformer which inherently doesn't have to be very big because the current draw is relatively small in fact the item which will draw the most current um, will be the magic eyes but um, I'm only putting them in there purely because it looks pretty and I've got them. Um, no other reason than that. It, it's just you can't really call this a hybrid preamp because the, pre, the um, magic eyes do nothing except look really cool. Now, as this has just arrived, I haven't actually tested it yet. But that's what I propose to do right now. Now, this has to be linked to the main board via this cable. And it's got the plug already on it, which will go into here. And the other end needs to be soldered into those holes there, observing which way around it goes. So I'll do that off camera because I don't think there's anything very exciting in you watching me solder a piece of wire into holes in the PCB. So I'll be back presently. This is my little test rig and I've just used a transformer here, which is 12 naught 12, but I should just be using one side of it. The black wire is the, the, the zero, so to speak, and the blue is positive and the other positive wire uh, or the plus wire, it's not positive, because it's AC, is just sitting there doing not a lot. Now this transformer is way too big for this, but it's just the first one that I had to find with 12 volts. This is the transformer input connections and this socket is way, way, way too small. I couldn't get the wires in the holes at all. I had to trim off some of the wires, which is a nonsense. Negative marks for the designer of this product way too small and in practice I think I'll end up removing this and soldering the wires directly to the PCB. Sadly it doesn't work. Um, don't really know why yet I'm going to have to have a look. Right well I've worked out what the problem is and took me a bit by surprise I have to say 
Um, that 12 volts isn't actually 12 volts. That's the naught volt line. And there is the 12 volts coming in on every single one of these. And basically the switch shorts it to ground and then it works. But it doesn't work without an LED in there. So if I plunk this LED in here, can you hear the relay clicking? So the relay, the, I should say the LED has to be in circuit for it to work. Now, what that means, of course, is as supplied without the LEDs, this kit will not work. So I'm really quite pissed off with the supplier of this because I thought, well, I can get this working because I really wanted some red LEDs, which I don't actually have in stock at the moment. And it was just out of desperation. I thought, well, I'll just pop an LED in there and see if I can see it switching. And it does switch. Obviously, there's only one to light up and it's just loose in there. But um, you can hear the relay doing its business. Well, the first part of the modifications are done. As you can see, I have removed the sockets that we don't need. Now, initially, I tried to unsolder them, but as it's a double sided board, the heat was just uh, being sucked away. And uh, maybe if you've got some better equipment than I have, but you might be able to do it. But saying that, I just snipped it. As you can see, this I haven't cleaned it up or anything. This is just as it was. I've just snipped the connections because we don't actually need this. So we will actually end up soldering to the pads directly. So that's the first part of the job modification done. So the board is now complete minus the LEDs. Well, the first part of the preamp is completed and for me the horriblest part because one thing I am not is a metal worker. Here are the B9A valve bases all screwed in and they will hold the magic eyes. This has just literally been transferred from my prototype that I showed on a previous video and it's now simply got to be wired in this is the um, voltage step up device and that's the driver so these will basically be going well these won't because the wires aren't long enough but uh, new wires will go on there and that's the magic eye part complete unfortunately at this moment there's nothing else in the box except a couple of old wires because we're still waiting on stuff from AliExpress and eBay, but more to come.